about this amazing master bath that we're about to walk in? Well, one of the things that they really, really wanted was his and her bathroom. When you walk into the room, it, it splits off into two spots, to two places. That's correct. The right side is the husband's side, the center shower they both use, and the left side is the uh, wife's side. She needed more workroom, she said, so she wanted her own space. So they, she has a bathtub on her side and they share the shower. They each have uh, a vanity and commode and makes them happy. Is that the marriage saver? <laughs> That's the marriage saver, exactly. <laughs> so tell us about some of the intricate detail that went into the planning and designing this master bath. Well, the main thing is that the space. They want it to be able to be separated because they're both going at the same time in the morning, getting ready for work or getting ready to go to, to whatever they're gonna do. So they wanted their own space. And uh, so we heated the floor. She has a nice warm bathtub. They have uh, plenty of sink space and counter space. And they each have incorporated on their side of the uh, bathroom are the master closets. So that way they have pretty much their own separate space. So the, you said the floors are heated. Yeah. What kind of um, process is it to, to get that type of floor? It's really quite common. It's underneath the tile there are heated wires that run in a continuous loop and oh. it works off of a thermostat just okay. like your house thermostat. You set it at your desired temperature and it will stay on. You typically turn it on and leave it on mm -hmm. and then you tile over the top of it. You have to be extremely careful when you're tiling so you mm -hmm. don't break the wire. But once it's in there, it's pretty good to go. It's kind of like your own heated blanket exactly. on the floor. <laughs> it's more so not cold than it is really warm. Yeah. So you wouldn't step on it and say, ooh, that's hot. It's like, ooh, that's not cold. Yeah, yeah. How long did it take them to, to pick the flooring and the tile? And... Well, they work with their decorator, and uh, they went on some field trips around town, and um, it didn't take them too long. How much, would a, how much does a bathroom like this cost? If I was, that's uh, really hard to say, but it's probably a uh, $50,000 bathroom. Could you do a smaller version of sure. this in a two hundred dollars to $300,000 home? It would be hard because it's the, the showers take up a lot of room. Mm -hmm. And when you have two of everything, well, you know how much room it takes in a regular home to have a single bathroom. So we're basically putting two bathrooms together. So you have to have a certain amount of space and is it willing, most people aren't willing to sacrifice that much room in their house for the bathroom only. I mean, that's a family room mm -hmm, basically. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's go see the, the kitchen, which is one of your favorite parts of the home. Okay, let's go. kitchen which you said was one of your favorite rooms in this house it is because this is where they spend all their time when they have friends over they congregate here in the kitchen they have the hearth room they have a big eight person dining table they have the family room right behind us you can live in this area right here like most people do these days and this is where they're most comfortable so is the reason why it's your favorite room is because it's all open and everyone can can talk to each other and laugh and be social. It is. They're a very big family. They like to have family gatherings and I like it for the fact that they can all be social. They're not compartmentalized even though this is a large home. It's a very livable home and this really is what makes it that way. I love how you can see who they are just by walking around their home. Like what kind of person that they are, the things that they like. I mean it's not sterile at all. You can tell they lived in this home. This house has a lot of personality. The decorator that they used, Carol Shutt, she was really, really good with the colors and all the fabrics in it. But their goal was to make it a livable, non-fancy house. They wanted certain things in their home size-wise, but they didn't want it to feel overwhelming and uninviting. It had to be homey. Well, you did an amazing job, and it looks like to me that you gave them exactly what they wanted, so they have to be thrilled. Well, thank you. I, they tell me they're very happy, so I'm, uh, I'm happy with them, and they, we see each other quite frequently, and um, they become very good friends. 
Well, if you would like a builder or remodeler who's going to listen to you and pay attention to the details like Phil does, give him a call. The contact information is on your screen. Terry, we're looking forward to seeing the do-it-yourself tips that you have in store for us this week. Okay, now we're getting into the time of the year when you got long, hot stretches of days. It's a perfect time to take care of uh, probably, I would say, our second most used living space in our house, and that's our decks. What we want to do is take a look at how to get them prepared, get them sealed so that we don't end up with a lot of rotted wood and we don't end up replacing things that we don't need to replace. First and foremost, what we want to do, you want to clean it. If you take uh, and, and get you a pressure washer or, or a good scrub brush, if you don't have a pressure washer, don't want to get into that, a good deck brush on a pole and some deck cleaner is going to get all the dirt, the residue, but most important, it's going to clean off any of the mildew that is there that keeps your deck from properly being sealed. Now, as we go into our sealers, there's basically four different types that you want to use and four different reasons to use it. The first uh, that we have is our three-year protection. It's, it's basically just a, a clear sealant, and you want to put that only on new wood. New wood takes a clear sealant. Then we'll step over to kind of, I guess you call these two here, semi-transparent, and you can add a color to them. They're for slightly worn decks or decks that aren't quite as new, got a little bit of weathering on them, but you still want to keep that natural wood grain and that natural look coming through the stain that you're putting on. And then we have our 10-year protection, which is a solid color. And we're going to show you the colors that you can get each one of these in here in, in just a second. But this is for a total coverage. Say you got some old stain on there and you can't get it off or some old color on there. You've painted it once. This is going to bring it all back to one natural color. And the colors that we have, you can really get close to natural wood to bring new life into that deck and to allow it to do it. Now, as you start to put your coats on, your first coat will probably, depending on the sun and the humidity, in about an hour or so be good for foot traffic. I'd give it 24 hours before I started having any heavy traffic or any kind of parties on it. And as we put all of our, our stain on, you're gonna look at your wood and if it's soaking in, that's good, that's what we want because it's going into all them wood grains and sealing it. So we'll wait a little while and we're gonna put another coat on until it kind of sets on top. Now when you see it, it comes a rain, you're gonna see water is gonna be puddled all over the, the deck and it's just gonna look clean and bright and you'll have you a deck that'll last your lifetime. You gotta take care of it if you don't wanna be replacing wooden boards. I'm with Betty Irvin with Mies Town and Marble. Betty, how long have you been a designer here? Uh, 18 years tomorrow. So that says a lot about Mies Town and Marble that you've been here so long. Yes, it's a family business and there's a lot to be said about family businesses. Well, so being here so long as a designer, you've seen a lot of things come and go. What's popular this year? Uh, one thing that's really popular are the Wood Looks porcelains. Uh, they look exactly like wood, uh, but they perform better than wood. Uh, you don't have to worry about water, you don't have to worry about large dogs and their claws, which seem to scratch the wood, and they'll never fade. And one of the other popular items that you were telling me about is, is the ceramic. Yes, this arabesque design here uh, is very popular. It's showing up in natural stone, it's showing up in ceramic. Um, it seems to be what everybody's asking for. And so what would you pair this with? Uh, we could pair this with any of our granites. This could also be used as a border or an accent. It doesn't have to be the entire wall. And also, this is a multiple color thing, so you would normally just use one of these colors or mm -hmm. two of these colors. What type of, um, you offer many different types of granite in it. Yes, we do. We're our, we offer granite, marble, and quartz. Uh, one advantage that we have, if it is a stock item, you only pay for what you take home. You're not buying the large slabs like you do at most places. What else do you have for us here? Well, the whites are always going to be popular, the subways, the bevels, um, and just putting a little accent strip in them can just make an amazing difference. Uh, we also have some 
Uh, this is silver travertine and the ledger stones. Uh, these stacked stones with the rough edge are extremely popular. Thank you so much for your time today, Betty. We really appreciate it. If you're interested in getting some stone or some tile for your bathroom or kitchen, be sure to give Mies Tile and Marble a call with the contact information on your screen.